go. All right, chapter 27 and 28 of the book of Genesis, and we're going to look at, I don't know, the, the more times I read it, the more dysfunctional this family seems to me. Because let's just review what has happened with uh, Rebecca and, and Isaac. Rebecca and Isaac got married. They had these two children, these, these infants. And while they were still in Rebecca's womb, God said that the younger is going to serve, I mean, the older is going to serve the younger. In other words, the promise of that I gave to Abraham is going to be passed through the younger son who turned out to be Jacob and not Esau. So that was God's decree. And if you look in chapter nine of Romans, uh, Paul tells us it was, it was a, a sovereign choice of God. It was nothing inherent within Jacob that, or, that made him better than Esau. It was God's sovereign choice. That's what Paul teaches us in the book of Romans. So we know from the very beginning that God has chosen the younger son, not Esau. However, what we find is the dynamic in the family is that the mother and the father have their favorites and they have split. And it has caused a rift throughout the whole family family dynamic so let's read it and then we'll talk about that and why it is so important that we do not do that verse 20, or chapter 27 when isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see he called esau his older son and said to him my son and he answered him here i am and he said behold i am old i do not know the day of my death now then take your weapons your quiver and your bow and go out to the field and hunt game for me and prepare me a delicious food such as I love and bring it to me so that I may eat that my soul may bless you before I die. All right, here's problem number one. These blessings were, in essence, what, what Isaac is telling Esau, his oldest and favorite son, hey, I want you to do this for me. I want you to go in the field and I want you to kill some game and I want you to cook a meal for me and bring it in for me so that I may bless you. Now, the issue with that is the blessing that Isaac is proposing to bestow upon Esau is in direct contradiction to what God has already decreed is going to happen. Furthermore, he's trying to do this in secret. So, for instance, you see when, when Israel blesses the 12 tribes of Israel, when Jacob blesses the 12, his 12 sons, he brings them all together, which was the typical way that in that day and age that you would do these blessings because... The blessing was the same as, for instance, when somebody dies now and they have a will, they gather everybody together and they have a reading of the will. Well, this was supposed to be a public thing where Isaac was going to bestow upon Esau, his eldest, the blessings of the firstborn. So, however, Isaac has already knows that God has decreed that Esau is not going to be the one who is going to receive the promise. He also understands that Esau has already sold his birthright to Jacob so that Esau no longer has a right to what Isaac is proposing. He's proposing to do something in secret that is going to thwart what God's plan was and what Esau, what happened between Esau and Jacob. Okay, so this is, this is not on the up and up. Then we come to Rebecca, and we're tempted to think of Rebecca as the good guy in this story not so much now rebecca was listening when isaac spoke to his son esau if you look at the tense of the hebrew this was a habit that rebecca had she made a habit or a it was it was a mark of her that she eavesdropped on her husband to try to determine what he was going to do so we see a bunch of shady characters here at the very beginning this whole thing Everybody in this narrative is, is shady in their character. Now, Rebecca was listening, which was her habit in, in the original Hebrew, when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. So when Esau went to the field to hunt for game and bring it, Rebecca said to her son Jacob, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau. Bring me game and prepare me the, for me delicious food that I may eat it and bless you before the Lord before I die. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice as I command you. Go into the flock and bring me two good young goats so that I may prepare them from them delicious food for your father such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father to eat so that he may bless you before he dies. 
okay? So Rebecca has this plan cooked up. She has eavesdropped on Isaac and, and heard that he is planning to do this sinister thing to try to thwart the will of God. And so she says, okay, then I'm going to take over and I'm going to oppose my husband in this and I will make sure that the will of God takes place. But I'm going to do it in a manner that is not godly. I'm going to do it in a deceptive manner, which is never, never the way to go about things. What should Rebecca have done? Anybody? This is open, open forum, open discussion. What should Rebecca have done? I don't reminded him of the birthright exchange exactly. has already happened. She should have went in and said, wait a minute. I heard what you said to our son Esau. Do you recall what God himself said about these two children? And then left it up to God and Isaac. Instead, she does exactly what Sarah and Abraham did. She does exactly what most of us tend to do when confronted with things like this. Right? God, I think you want me to do this. I'm pretty sure this is what you want me to do, God, so I'm going to make it happen. When we should just simply remind ourselves this is what God wants to happen, he'll make it happen and trust in God. She had zero trust that God would accomplish his will for Jacob. Zero trust, so zero faith, in other words. She's, she's acting outside of faith, without faith. So, whereas Isaac is trying to thwart the will of God, Rebekah is acting without faith towards the will of God. And then we come to Jacob. And we see that Jacob does not, there is no objection to his mother's plan that is based on moral grounds. Not one that is based on the fact that deceiving his father is wrong, that trying to, thwart, trying to, to accomplish the will of God through fleshly means is wrong. None of that. His only concern is what is going to happen to me when all this goes, goes south, when all this goes wrong. Listen to what he says. Uh, verse 11. But Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Perhaps my father will fill me, and I shall seem to be mocking him and bring a curse upon myself and not a blessing. His mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go and bring them to me. Jacob does not say, wait a minute, mama, this is not right. Jacob doesn't say, wait a minute, mama, God said that this is the way it's going to be. Let's just trust God. Jacob doesn't say, wait a minute, mama, let's just go in and remind daddy what God said about us too. Right? And remind daddy that he's always sold me his birthright and let God take care of it. No, he said, well, what's going to happen to me if, if, if I can't fool him? I don't look like Esau. Esau's hairy. I'm not hairy. I'm, I'm smooth. So then I'm going to get cursed and not blessed. He's only concerned about what's going to happen to him. Because there is no indication in chapter, there is no indication until chapter 28 that Jacob uh, has any relationship with God at all. Just hold that thought and keep listening. Verse 14, so he went and took them and brought them to his mother, and his mother prepared delicious food such as his father loved. Then Rebekah took the best garments of Esau, her older son, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son, and the skins of the young goat she put on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. And she put the delicious food and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. Okay, at this time Esau is a grown man. A grown man with two wives. He does not live in his mother's house. So why did his mother have a garment of Esau? Why did she have the skins prepared to put on her younger son, Jacob? Because this was a plan that Re Rebecca had cooked up long beforehand. She knew what Isaac was going to try to do. And so she had made plans to trick Isaac. So this shows me that there's a dynamic going on in this family that is not healthy at all. And, and just let me say it. I, I don't think there's a whole lot of husbands on here, but just let me say it. Husbands, your wife comes before your children. No if, ands, or buts. Your wife comes before your children. However, Isaac had chosen Esau above his wife or his other children. Consequently, Rebecca chose the other son. 
she chose Jacob. So we just have to be careful to understand that the family dynamic is such that the husband and wife come together to form one flesh. They together produce the offspring. But husbands, your wife always comes before your children. Right? My wife comes before my, my three boys. It is not even a question. That's not the case in this dynamic. For Isaac, Esau came first. For Rebecca, Jacob came first. Whereas in a good marriage, in a good Christian marriage, in a godly marriage, the husband and wife are one flesh and the children have equal concern of both parents. But I hope I, hope I made that clear. Because it caused a whole lot of issues in this family. And we're still suffering the issues of the way that Isaac and Rebecca related to each other all these years later. We'll, we're still suffering from that. <clears throat> so she just happened to have some of Esau's clothes that smelled like him. And she just happened to have these skins of young goats to put on her son. Verse 18, so he went into his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am, who are you, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Now sit up and eat of my gain, gain that your soul may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, how is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And here's one of the most chilling things that, that you can read in the scripture. Look what Isaac, look what Jacob does. Because the Lord, your God, granted me success. He brings God into this lie. Notice he doesn't say the Lord, my God which is why I said that he doesn't have a relationship with God now, but he's invoking God's name to his father to say this is, and he involves God in his lie to his father. How is it, son, that you were so successful? How, how, how is it, son, that you, you're back so quickly? I sent you out to hunt game. Hunting game doesn't take place in instantaneously. How were you, how were you successful? Oh, the Lord, your God, allowed me to be successful so I could do this for you. You're just waiting for the lightning to come strike him, aren't you? He's he's just he's he's blaspheming against God by bringing God into this as if God had helped him go out and hunt. He's bringing God into this lie. He answered, "Because the Lord your God granted me success." Then Isaac said to Jacob, "Please come near, that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not." So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, who felt him and said. The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him, and he said, Are you really my son Esau? And he said, I am. And then he uh, and then he said, Bring it near to me that I may eat of my son's game and bless you. So he brought it near to him, and he ate, and he brought him wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come near and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him, and Isaac smelled the smell of his garments and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is the smell of the field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and of the plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be everyone who blesses you. So there, the, the blessing of Abraham has officially passed to Jacob. Although it passed through Jacob through faulty means. It passed through Jacob through fleshly means. God would have made it happen in a godly manner if everybody in the story had behaved in a godly manner. But they, they did not. And the consequences of this, which we will see, the consequences of this is that Jacob never sees his mother again and his mother never sees Jacob again. We see that there is a division between Jacob and his brother Esau. We see that there is a division between Isaac and Esau and Isaac and Jacob and Rebekah and Esau. The family is irrevocably broken because of the deception that all parties, though everybody involved in this, is uh, willingly participating in. Esau knew he had no right to the blessing that Jacob, that that Isaac was going to bestow upon him. Isaac knew 
that Esau should not be blessed because God had chosen Jacob. Jacob and Rebekah knew they should not lie to Isaac. They should not deceive Isaac to receive the blessing fraudulently, that they should allow God to work it out in his manner. So nobody is spotless in this whole story. Verse 30, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, when Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. He also prepared delicious food and brought it to his father. And he said to his father, let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that you may bless me. His father Isaac said to him, who are you? He answered, I'm your son, your firstborn Esau. Then Isaac trembled very violently and said, who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? And I ate it all before you came, and I have blessed him. Yes, and he shall be blessed. As soon as Esau heard the words of his father, he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully, and he has taken away your blessing. Esau said, Is he not, not rightly named Jacob? For he has cheated me these two times. Wait a minute. He didn't cheat you. You sold your birthright for a bowl of beans. That's not cheating. You did it willfully. But, like many of us, he wants to blame somebody else. For he has cheated me these two times. He took away my birthright. He didn't take away your birthright. You sold his, your birthright. And behold, now he has taken away my blessing. Then he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, I have made him lord over you, and all his brothers I have given to him, to him for servants, and with grain and wine I have sustained him. What then can I do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Esau, then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, away from the fatness of the earth shall be your dwelling be, and away from the dew of heaven on high. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you shall break his yoke from your neck." And the story of the nation of Israel and the descendants of Esau is one of they they serve the nation of Israel and then they rebel against the nation of Israel. And they serve the nation of Israel and they rebel against the nation of Israel. They serve the nation of Israel and then they rebel against the nation of Israel until we come to there uh, at the very end time of Jesus and the Herodians, uh, their descendants of Esau, and they rule the nation of Israel until Rome destroys the nation of Israel. So that is a direct response, uh, that direct result of the deception that is going on here from both sides. I don't know why somebody from Rhode Island's calling me. Uh, now, verse 41. Now Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are approaching, then I will kill my brother Jacob. But the words of Esau, her older son, were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Behold, your brother com Esau comforts himself about you by planning to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, arise and flee to Laban, my brother in Haran, and stay with him a while until your brother's fury turns away until your brother's anger turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him. Now, notice how Rebecca just simply leaves herself out of everything that has happened until your brother forgets what you have done to him. Well, wait a minute. Rebecca was just as much a part of doing it to Esau as Jacob. And it, it, and it just catches me. Every time I read this story, these people look worse and worse and worse. And they remind me a lot of myself, but they do. They look worse and worse and worse. Rebecca orchestrated the whole thing. All of the shenanigans was her responsibility. And yet here, oh, you need to run to my brother Laban until your brother forgets what you have done to him. You, Jacob was simply obeying what his mother told him to do. But until your brother's anger turns away from you and he forgets what you have done for him to him, then I will send and bring you from there why should I be bereft of you both in one day? Then Rebecca said to Isaac, I loathe my life because of the Hittite women. If Jacob marries one of the Hittite women like these, one of the women of the land, what good will my life be to me? So she goes into Isaac and says, I will make your life miserable if you allow Jacob to marry one of these Hittite women like Esau did. 
That's in essence what Rebecca has just said. I will make your life miserable if you don't get me a wife for Jacob from somebody not from these women, like your your son Esau did. So she had told Jacob, look, I need you to run from your brother until he forgets what you've done to him. And then when his anger's passed, I'll bring you back. Never not knowing that it will be 20 years before Jacob is allowed to come back, not knowing that she would not survive those 20 years and never see her son again. So the family is broken up because of this. And I think that took me a little longer than I expected. So we will, we will attack Jacob's dream next week. But just to give you a little preliminary, Jacob's dream here in Genesis 28 and, and the Apostle Paul's um, Damascus Road experience are very similar. And we will look at that similarity next week. So do I have any questions on chapter 27? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. And maybe because I missed last week and the week prior, I just am out of the loop. But is there any indication of what Isaac and Rebecca's relationship was prior to having their children? Because it seems like there's a big trust issue, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, and <laughs> yes, actually. And I think we talked about it. At least I, I, I suspect I would have <laughs> talked about it. Uh, when we look at the patriarchs, Isaac is the only one who seems to have uh, practiced monogamy. We, we're not told he had any other wife than Rebecca. That he was smitten with Rebecca and Rebecca was smitten with him at the very beginning. It was the, the twins in the womb, right? After Isaac prayed to God for her fertility because she was barren for a long time. And Isaac prayed for God for his wife, Rebecca. And God blessed them with the twins. And it was the twins that seemed to have uh, been a catalyst for uh, issues. For the issues, for the division between them. They, they could not agree. Uh, bottom line is they could not agree to abide what God had, had decreed about Jacob and Esau. And so Isaac, his favorite was Jacob. And, but we do see, if you look at it closely, um, we see that Isaac's approval of, Jake, of Esau was based on Esau's performance. Why did he like Esau? Because Esau was a man that Jacob admired. Because Esau always sought to please Isaac by being a man of the field and not a man of the, the hearth like Jacob was. Did that, did that help? Bottom line is yes, uh, they start out blissfully. They start out as a, as a really good marriage. And it, as far as we know, Isaac never looked anywhere else for companionship. That he practiced monogamy when Abraham didn't. When, when we see that Jacob doesn't, none of the patriarchs did. I guess so. I guess I'm just kind of curious in my own head if maybe it's just because they're twins and they couldn't differentiate which even though Esau was older like which one really deserved it I guess I don't know yeah or would, well, it, have, would Esau, it have been different if they weren't twins I, I, like, I don't know I, I don't know because if you read the story there's you know we got a hand come out and then we got Esau come out and we got one grabbing his heel so the, the infants were fighting in the womb it seems about which one was going to be first so you know, we, you know, Esau's the eldest, but by a matter of in, by a matter of moments, if that, because he comes out and Jacob's hand is wrapped around his heel, so Jacob comes out right after that. So it's anything else. 